uh, spending on cloud computing has a bullish forecast, according to a research report. Worldwide end-user spending on public cloud services is forecast to grow 20.4% in 2022 to 497, no, 494 billion dollars, up from 410 billion dollars in 2021, according to a forecast from Gartner Inc. Uh, in 2023, they're saying that's going to reach nearly 600 billion dollars. Now, software as a service remains the largest public cloud services market segment, forecasted to reach 176 billion in end user spending in 2022 infrastructure as a service IAAS forecast to reach 119 billion and platform as a service PAAS well that's forecast to increase to 109 billion dollars as far as forecasting is concerned joining us to discuss further on cloud computing is a cloud engineer Ehi Anabs uh, Ehi good morning to you thank you so much uh, for joining us um, what do you make of this uh, global spending forecast for cloud computing hi hi good morning um Honestly, I think these numbers are um, conservative. Um, they actually look really small to me because um, it's only just going to grow bigger and bigger. Um, I think uh, cloud ad um, adoption is just soaring through the roof. And I think these numbers are really, really conservative, honestly. OK, so you're even more bullish than the folks at, uh, at Gartner. OK, so for, for those that don't yeah. know, <laughs> what, what are the benefits of, of cloud computing that you see driving all this spending? Um, you know, I think, first of all, you have to understand how it has um, helped innovation. Um, being having access to just powerful computers as you know it has really really evolved um, literally every, every aspect of our lives from I know people just think it's just tech but it starts we have researchers now who have access to powerful computers to run machine learning models for um, DNA testing and um, you know these these things are really happening all over and you know it's not just the focus on tech and technology so um, people from the comfort of their bedrooms can have um, access to like really, really powerful computers. And then you have innovation, like the, um, the ability to fail because, you know, you have um, the, the entire concept of cloud computing is that you can rent servers from, you know, you, you go on to a website and you can rent servers. And then when you're done with it, you know, you can discard it. So having this um, disposable um, energy and um, having this disposable computing energy is just, you know, it, it helps innovation a lot. You have the liberty to fail as much as you want because, you know, oh, we just get a new server. Um, you know, this is, is propelling, you know, innovation in science, innovation in technology, innovation in education, you know, telecommunications, um, supply, you know, management, all of it. It's just, it's happening everywhere. Gotcha. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. okay. Yeah, in, fact, in fact, I think it was last, it was a year, just a year ago, we covered the um, opening of the Africa Data Center at the, you know, I think, Co Atlantic, $100 million data center. So there's going to be a lot of, I guess, you know, uh, uh, storage of information there as well. And they're going to be providing lots of services. What type of growth potential? And I mentioned that to ask you uh, growth potential for cloud computing do you see in Africa, I guess, particularly in Nigeria? I suppose one of it would be data residency. Um, you know, we have, um, you know, we are collecting data at an enormous space right now. And all of it is, you know, a lot of it is sensitive and it's, it's beneficial to us that we can keep all of this data at home. We can keep it, you know, within us and we can protect all of this sensitive data. So um, having this, you know, the data center in, in Atlantic is, is amazing. We can have data residency laws that can actually protect our, you know, our customer data and, you know, privacy and all of that. So this is this is incredible. It's, it's really good. It's really good for it's good for us in Africa. Yes. OK, great stuff. As far as cloud platforms are concerned. I mean, we're, we're putting up those segments, software as a service, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service. I think there's even desktop as a service. There's so many little segments. Is the dominance though likely to remain in the West where the servers that are being used are dominated by you know, Amazon Web Services, Azure by Microsoft, Google Cloud, and so on and so forth? Um, I mean, for now, maybe, but, you know, as people want, you know, as privacy concerns, you know, grow, people are going to want to keep their data at home. So, I mean, for now, maybe they will dominate, but and in the future, like this, these things are going to, it's going to expand and people would want to keep things at home. So um, for now, they may have the upper hand because they're first in the markets, but eventually privacy concerns would, you know, 
would um, override whatever dominance they have right now, and <laughs> there will be growth. There will always be growth. You're, you're, this is you're very bullish on this, and that's 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 to be uh, to be acknowledged. <laughs> um, what, so, what yes. what are the trends? What kind of cloud projects are you currently involved in? Oh, right now. Um, in a few actually so i work as a consultant and um this is one of the the major problems we have actually we have, it's more of a skill problem than it is a you know a growth problem so um a lot of organizations who are unable to hire full-time engineers would um hire consultants to help um, manage the applications so what i do is i make sure the applications are up and running you know um i make sure that when their users or their customers want their data it's available you know when uh, anything happens you know i'm there to call and say hey 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 this is how we get your applications up and running you know this is how your applications are doing and this is how your customers are you know are happy using your applications so yes yeah, so that's that's uh, that's one of the um, projects. I mean, I'm technically a reliability engineer, which is what I do is make sure that applications are reliable. You know, when you click on your website, uh, your website comes on your your phone and you can use it. That's what I do. I make sure that happens. Okay, so the I mean, because you mentioned the shortage, the skills shortage, and there's of course we've we've reported on the number of skilled Nigerians that are leaving the country and the gaps that it's causing here and the sectors that it's impacting. Does it cost a lot to train a cloud engineer from scratch? I mean. Yes, honestly. It, well, yes and no. I think when you talk about cost, it's more of infrastructure cost because you need electricity, you need fast internet, you need, um, you know, you need data. So it's more of an infrastructure problem. You need, you know, you need to have stable light. You need to have all of that. When you're providing it for yourself, it becomes more expensive. And then you need access to um, to the internet, a lot of it. You need to download things, you need to watch videos, you need to read, you need to study. So I'll say yes. I mean, the barrier for entry is really low. You can go on YouTube and basically train yourself. Um, but, you know, outside of that, you need money to pay for cloud services. You need money to buy data. You need money. You need money to even convince your parents to do it because um, it's not a, it's not, a very widely known occupation right now so there's a little bit of like ah cloud what's that are you going to be a meteorologist i have to explain so you need you need all of that um i guess Right. Space and to do that, yeah. it, it, this came up when a lot of, I guess in the last election period, a lot of INEC centers were getting burned down. And where people were saying, well, if you had, you know, cloud services, you could store all this data. And it's not, not just INEC, I'm talking about just buildings burning down, you know, business uh, businesses, you know, having what they're stored, have physically stored, you know, being impacted. So that, that did come up. So I'm thank, thanks for speaking to that as far as, you know, the, uh, the, the profession being widely needed here can you give us your outlook though what does the future hold in terms of growth uh, for for cloud computing oh it's um it's, it's great i mean we have uh, programs every year um we have the google um, africa developer scholarship we have microsoft skills um skills labs so there's a lot of investments coming here because it's it's they realize it's easier to just train people you know so there's a lot of investment coming in when it comes to like um scaling up um people who want to have an interest in this and who want to learn um definitely and you know um i think google they also give like free credits in case you want to try out the platform and you don't have money to buy it yet so yes, um, there's, there's, there is going to be a lot of growth. And you know, people, young people now, they want, um, they want the freedom to choose what they want to do with their life. And um, you know, now with um, information everywhere, you know, you just, everything is a Google click away or whatever. You can learn whatever you want to learn by yourself. So um, yes, there's definitely a lot of growth. And as more people learn and acknowledge that this is a real like you know all we're able to use our computers because of these people you know we're able to you know all of these things that happen at back end real people are behind it and this is like a real legitimate um profession i think we are going to have more people in my industry hopefully um please come <laughs> the barrier for entry is really low <laughs> Right. Yes. I, I do want to ask you about cybersecurity risks, though. Um, what 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 is the how high is that, and how you know how can that impact um, the use of data moving around and so on and so forth when when it comes to storage on the cloud? You know, I did mention data privacy. This is when you have your own data center and you own your own cloud. But um, most of your, um, I guess, security concerns are just how good your engineers are, how good your cybersecurity engineers are. Um, a lot of cloud providers do have like managed services to like protect your, um, your data. 
Um, but a lot of, I, I think it's really, really, it's, it's really safe when it comes to protecting your data and all of that. And, um, yeah, there, there's a lot of DDoS, um, DDoS protection. There's a lot of um, IAM protection and all of that. Um, I think it's relatively low, but you know, there's no such thing as 100% anything. If anybody tells you something is 100%, you have to like not believe them a little bit. So a lot of security is in your hands, to be honest. And um, that's one of the flexibility of using the cloud services. You provide, you can, you know, you can outsource as much of security as you want to like the big providers, AWS and co, and then you can do as much as you want for yourself. Great. So there's a lot of flexibility, yes. Great stuff. Thank you so much for joining us uh, here at NAVS uh, Cloud Engineer. Really appreciate you giving us some insights uh, into the industry. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so much.